everybody, welcome back to the video. I'm Papa from Gaming Kingdom. Today we're playing some more Balloons Adventure on Tower Defense. So today, as you can probably tell by the title, we are ranking every single hero in Balloons Adventure on Tower Defense. Yeah, hooray! So I wanted to do this video for a while. This actually took a lot more effort than most videos, so I hope you guys do enjoy. I actually, I, I even have a script for this one. Um, but yeah, so let's just get started into this. First things, I don't want him to be first, but you probably guessed it. Number one, is Super Monkey, and I know I'm going from best to worst, that's weird, I don't care. But Super Monkey. So, he's obviously has the strongest build in the game. Vengeful Sangar transformation, it's it's crazy. If you've seen it, A, it looks incredible, and B, it deals just insane damage. It will melt anything, including bats. But if it was just that, he probably wouldn't be first, because support is super key in this game. However, he also has his heroic aura, which makes him a lot better. Because it makes him immune to negative effects, which Holy game for a lot of difficult maps. He's your only or your one of two immunities. Plus, he actually does good damage, so he's really useful for that early game. And late game, it'll probably save your trinkets a lot for a lot of more difficult maps. But that's not the main benefit. The main benefit, obviously, in case you didn't know, is a 10% discount to all towers in range. It's really good. It's really helpful. At least if you're not like me and don't upgrade him last every single time, which somehow I keep managing to do. I know about this upgrade, that's one of the reasons I like him so much, I forget about it all the time. But it's super helpful if you actually use it at the right time. Okay, two seconds, Psy. Psy is the best tower for the, or not the best tower, second best tower for the exact same reason Super Monkey is the best. She has insane damage, and her utility is super helpful as well. She's definitely better late game tower than early game, since her high star upgrades are really what makes her as good as she is. However, when you have those upgrades, her damage is close to Super Monkey's. Her support is also super useful with Bloom Sabotage. It's a lifesaver. If you play BC6, you know how important Sabotage ninjas are, especially for Kim's mode. And in this game, they are just as good for Impossible. If a bad pops near the end of the track, which happens a lot to me if you've seen some of my videos, Sabotage is the difference between losing and winning. And most of the time, it makes you win. So that's pretty helpful. Number three, Commander Cassie. So. Yeah, it's another high DPS with some support, but you know what? They're really, really good, so, I mean, there's no question. Damage and support together, it's a really good combo. So Commander Cassie, once again, has insane damage, with one of her biggest advantages actually being that, at least in the form of her planes and missiles, she has infinite range, which is a pretty big quality because not too many characters do. Although she's still really good against group balloons, her specialty, at least it seems to me, is definitely against single target DPS. Especially if you go for the Moe Mala missiles, she will do an incredible job against Baboons. However, DPS is not really her best quality and not what I use her for most of the time. In case you don't know, if you've seen some of my ally videos, Scramble is super good. So Scramble is an upgrade for her, let's get two more of each of her allies. It's really helpful. The reason it's especially useful is that Commander Cassie is a monkey, which means he can have Cobra and Tech Terror. So, yep, that's right, three Cobras, three Tech Terrors. It's insane. The Cobras will increase your income a ton, and the Tech Terrors will do insane damage. Not to mention the fact she can have more allies than that. Those are obviously the best ones, but there are still other really good allies that you can equip to. And, I mean, I don't know, I don't use allies a ton, but those two in particular are allies you probably will be using. Though, once again, that feature is not really so good to late game. And unlike Science Super Monkey, getting Commander Cassie is a lot harder since you have to beat extreme difficulty. But I mean, you can beat Extreme, especially on maps that aren't that bad, which are hers, fairly easily. Really, if you get Phoenix 1, you're pretty much through that mid-game. Number 4, Warrior PB. So this one might be a bit more controversial, but if you guys have used her, you probably know why she's so good. She can be really good with DPS with her armies of cookies, archers, and gumball machines, which is more so true early game, since trinkets and weapons don't really affect her very much. But her main benefit is born to rule. This upgrade lets you get one more of every ally equipped to any character. To make it even better, it makes placing them 25% cheaper, which is a really good combo with Commander Cassie because, well, there's the discount. And you know why that's important? Because Tech Terrors cost $12,000 to place. They're expensive. You'll save $3,000 each, and if you have that combo, you're probably getting at least four of them, which will save you $12,000. It's like a free Tech Terror. That's a pretty big deal. Number five is Finn. He's cheap, he can be strong, he can solo the early game, lets you get all of your income set up. That's pretty much it. 
I mean, to make him a little better, his flying kick is a nice extra stall if you have it. And big hearted heroes, we do round can be good to have as well. But really, he's a good starting hero. And if you have him with an eco build, if you've seen my fin guide, um, the eco build is super useful to get your money up. If you're having a difficult time with an impossible map, and it's not like a split lane map, he's a really, really good tower to help. Help you out. He's probably going to be in your loadup most of the time. Unless you're doing something that you really aren't struggling with whatsoever, you're probably going to want to have him in there. Number six is PB. So PB makes a lot of money. She increases the stats of towers and range, and can get you more allies of herself. She has lots of support, although she does pretty much no damage. Royal Decree, which you do need to have her at level 5 for, makes $750 around. It's a little annoying, because you have to press the ability every time, and it doesn't let you press it in advance, and it's just irritating, but it does make a lot of money, so it's a big deal. But the much bigger deal is two more of each of PB's allies. So, oh sorry, two me. No, two me is the upgrade man. Yeah, two me lets you have two more of each of her allies. It's really helpful, but to me, it's also one of her best qualities. Because, well, she can have, um, what's this, Gumball? Yes, Gumball and Lemon Hope. Lemon Hope increases the attack speed of everyone. Gumball is an insane stall. A little worse than Unsnabidio, but beyond him, he's the second best, for sure. Okay, um, also one last thing. Finally, last thing. Regal Presence increases range and pierce of towers and range. It's not by a ton, but it makes a big difference. So, all really, all in all, PB just has a lot of support, but once again, pretty much no damage, so you can't rely on that. But she has a lot of support, and just like her twin warrior PB, which I didn't actually mention this for her, both of them, their trinkets and weapons, it doesn't matter too much, so it gives you free trinket and weapon slots. Which is actually super useful because, trust me, there are a lot of support trinkets that just take up a space, but you don't want them on your higher DPS characters. So, for characters, for trinkets like that, PB and Warrior PB, super duper, duper helpful. Okay, number seven, Sam. So I do have to admit, I have a bit of a bias towards Sam. She's probably one of my favorite towers, if not my most favorite tower in all of Boon's Mention Tower Defense. However, she does have a variety of skills and cheap price, which makes her still super useful. A big reason people use Sam is obviously for the Phoenix Wand. Phoenix Wand is just broken. It's an infinite ability, it's super powerful, and you just get it on spawn. It's really, really good. Um, however, she has a lot of other useful skills as well, like Polymorph, which, you know where I mentioned Gumball? Polymorph basically turns her into a Gumball. A little bit worse, but still, it's like an extra Gumball. It's pretty useful, it slows a lot of balloons. It's a bit random, I'm not quite sure what it targets for. I want to say target strong, but it might target first, I'm not quite sure. Maybe it relies on your targeting, I don't know. But it's definitely pretty useful regardless. And then she also has Mysterious Portal, which... I got him, it doesn't help out all that much, but it will protect you from all non moral balloons. Which to me, most more often than not, just means it's gonna keep me alive from stray purples or zombie balloons, cause in terms of balloons, I'm not leaking to ceramics, I'm leaking to purple balloons, because they suck a lot. <laughs> ah, purple balloons are annoying. Um, but lastly, she also has Homelinear Storm. I know, level 7 ability, blah blah blah, lots of people don't have it. But, although it does do decent damage, that's not really what it's useful for. It stuns all balloons, including up to ZMGs and DETs. And it's a really good stun, plus against DETs, basically stuns them, keeps them from moving, and does most of the damage to kill them on its own. It's really, really good. Plus, it's pretty good area effect. Like, it's not perfect, but it's a fairly big radius, so that's pretty helpful as well. Number eight, C4 Charlie. So I don't like him too much, but I do have to admit he is one of the best Moai popping towers in the game. Mostly, his Moab Assassin is a big boost against Bads or ZMGs, but his basic attack is pretty strong against them as well, since you'll have to go for the Moab Molo path if you want to get that Moab Assassin. He can definitely be pretty useful against Blooms as well with his stun and setting Blooms on fire. And if you do want to go the other option, double bombs. I mean, one more bonus is that he can be used in combo with Commander Cassie, though that's a little iffy. Her two paths are very split as well, they're very even. But he does have quite a few useful situations. I don't like to use him too much. Maybe that's because I got him too late in the game. His map, although you only have to be on normal mode, his map is the hardest map in the entire game. So, I was scared of it. I didn't like it, so I did it really late. He was the last hero I got. So... I don't know, I'm not a big fan of him, but he definitely is super strong, so I have to put him at number 8 because you'd get mad at me if I didn't, and honestly, that's where he deserves to be. 
Number nine, FP. So, Flame Princess, in case you don't know what FP stands for. Nine and eight, I'm a little iffy about, they could probably switch, but I'm leaving as this. So, she basically see for Charlie, but for balloons, which is why she's a little less useful. She is lead and can get cheap camo. She is homing projectiles. They have insane pierce. That's in, like that's everything you need. The only th weakness is purple balloons, which you know there are other things to deal with purple balloons that they do still suck. Um, but even against purple balloons, she has her like explosive fire kitty, which sounds incredible by the way, um, which you know can still deal with them because apparently a giant fire kitten uh, blows up and does explosive damage. That we're gonna ignore that. But yeah, so. She can do quite a bit of damage to mobs as well, sp specifically with her flamethrower attack. But overall, she's just super good tower, especially early game. Um, but she can also be very helpful once you give her lots of trinkets and stuff. But really, getting FP, Flame Princess, in the early game makes a big difference because she will be your main DPS for really a really long time until you start getting some really good trinkets. Once you get like Super Monkey Visor and Camera Detection stuff, Super Monkey can probably become your main, but until then, really, Flame Princess is gonna be your main DPS. Number 10 is Max. So, Max is a tough one, I have to admit. He's meant to be mob damage, and he does do really good mob damage, but he also isn't the best at it. And he misses a lot, and he's outclassed by a lot of towers for other things, like Psy and Super Monkey and Flame Princess, and then against Morab, we just covered C4 Charlie's better, but also probably most of those three are better as well. I mean, he does have one support upgrade, op optimization, which gives increased pierce to sharp weapons, sharp weapon using towers nearby, which, first of all, is a very weird description, very unclear, but as far as I can tell, it increases pierce to sword and dart users, which isn't horrible, but honestly, pierce is not that important of a stat in this game. I know in other Balloons games it's really good, but in BATTD, I mean, it's not useless, it's definitely important, but... If you really need pierce, most of the towers have good enough base pierce on their own, so, or through weapons, so it's really not that important. I'm putting him at number 10 because I really do believe he deserves to be sort of like, I guess sort of like C tier-ish. Let me know, by the way, if you do want me to turn this into a tier list, it would be a pretty easy thing to do. Um, but yeah, he's kind of like C tier-ish. He's worse than B. He's not quite good enough. He can be used. Some people like him a lot more. I know he got nerfed badly before he was like easily the best tower in the game. But when I started playing, which was like two years ago, he already wasn't all that great, so, you know. Number 11, Moxlin. So, I have to be honest, Moxlin's mostly here because she is her exclusive ally, Hans and Abadir. Hans and Abadir, ever is absolutely insane. He cuts the movement speed of all balloons in half. Not bads, obviously, but still a big deal. And makes them take double damage. Like, the, how is that not incredible? That's one of, he's one of the best allies in the game, no question. And he can only be equipped to her. Well, and Hunter Marston, but once again, we're not including the premium. So, that's a big part of the reason she's good. However, she also has an instrument weapon, which instantly makes her super useful still, because she can give damage, or attack speed, or money making, or all those things, which are super good. Instrument weapons, they're insane support. Um, she can also do some pretty decent damage, and does have infinite range, which is a pretty nice quality. Um, she has a lot of combo trinkets, like specialty things, like her basketball, and... I believe the gemstone is meant for her, the demon heart. She has a lot of good buffs with trinkets. So if you do have a lot of those endgame trinkets, you can easily make her pretty good because there's a good combo of them. But really, she's definitely not a solo tower if you've seen my solo video. But she is overall a pretty good tower. But like really everything that's below like 6th or 7th in this list, it's pretty much up to you who you put in. There are like 8 towers, well, we covered there's 15 towers if you don't have premiums. You can only have 10. 5 of them you can't use. So really, the bottom, like, eight or so are sort of up to you which ones you want to use. She can be very useful, and if you're going for late game, if you're going for purple, Hunter Hunson Abadir is pretty much a must, so she comes along too, plus her instrument weapon makes her pretty useful as well. I mean, she does have decent upgrades, but that's really her main benefit. Number 12, Jake. So, he uses an instrument weapon, check, he's useful, but he's also really good with Finn for Brofist, and can be really good against ceramics. He's pretty decent early game as well, but he's a little worse than Finn, and there are a lot of other towers that are better for that, but he can make you a decent amount of money. Um, one more positive is that he does reduce some ability cooldowns with Become by My Sliver, which is a little based on luck, but it can be super useful because he does it quite a bit, and it's a fairly decent reduction. But one more bonus that we all have to admit is that 
in Jake's suit, he just looks ridiculously strange and odd, and I don't know how to describe it. It's pretty cool looking, though. Number 13, Ice King. So, winter weather, or big freeze. They slow down everything. And beyond that, he's somewhat useful against ceramics and pretty much nothing else. He has camera protection, which is pretty great, and you can give him Phoenix Wand or Thought Can Wand and all that stuff. Because he has the wand, it gives him an advantage. And he could also be a good tower with Phoenix Wand, and it's also similar to Warrior PB. Trinkets and weapon buffs don't really affect him all that much, so he can be one where most of his trinket slots are free. And I have to admit, his stalls, like Winter Weather and Big Freeze, they're really good. But overall, he's not a tower I find myself using all that much, because really, he can't really solo very well because of all the white and zebras. He doesn't do that much damage, and his stalls kind of get outclassed by characters like Hunts and Abadir and um, Gumball, because they just, like, Hunts and Abadir's stall is better or some, like, well, it's better because Hunts and Abadir is a, cuts their speed in half, um, Ice King does stop them, but Gumball's stop is a little bit better, so he kind of just gets unclassed. Number 14, second class, Captain Cassie. So, her damage is okay. She can make a, quite a bit of bonus money with Bloom Pillage, but that's pretty much it. Her only real good quality is that she's cheap, which can come in quite a bit of candy, and she is a water tower, and you get her pretty early on, so she's not bad at the stage of the game that you get her, but she's not that great. She gets unclassed by a lot of units, and overall, she just doesn't stack up all that well. Her one sort of advantage, I guess, is that she has the secret upgrade treasure hunter, which does make you a lot of money, but you need like $30,000 to actually get it set up, so it doesn't really end up being useful in that many situations. But she definitely is not that bad of a tower. Really, one thing I do have to keep in mind here, none of these towers are bad. BATTD, Bloom's Venture Time Tower Defense, they do a really good job of balancing their towers but some towers are clearly, undisputedly better than others. So, this is also just my opinion. Let me know if you guys will change this a little bit. I'm hoping at least this is similar to what you guys would pick, but let me know. And finally, you know what it is, if you know what all the towers are. Number 15, Juggernaut Max. He's last place. What do you expect? He's not useless, like I said, but he's not really good. And... I mean, his damage isn't that great, which is not a very good quality. He misses, he's pretty expensive. He uses darts, which is pretty good. He can get some really good buffs with trinkets and weapons. But even then, he's really only okay, and that's pretty much it. He's expensive, he can get lead pop power, but it's actually expensive to get. And he doesn't even have camera protection. If they gave him a camera protection upgrade that was cheap, it would instantly make him a significantly better tower, especially early on. But he also, in order to get him, you have to be an extreme map. So by the time you have access to him, he's already been outclassed. He's the worst tower in the game. I'm sorry, that's just my opinion. I know a lot of you guys like him, but that's just how it is. So, yeah, this is pretty much it. That's all 15. Um, there is a lot less to say about the worst towers, which makes sense because I'm basically listing off the reasons they're good. I'm listing off all their best qualities. I am mentioning their weaknesses and stuff, but really... If they're worse, they don't have as many benefits, so they just don't have as much to talk about them. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I spent a lot of time and did a lot of prep work for this, so please consider giving the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe and join the Purple Elephant Squad. It makes my day. It's super nice, and I really do appreciate it. If Once again, if you have anything about this you want to change or have questions to ask me, let me know. Leave a comment. I'll try my best to answer it all of you pretty quickly. I'm pretty good about it, but sometimes it takes me a little bit longer. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye!